Hello, and welcome to Breast Cancer Conversations, a podcast brought to you by survivingbreastcancer.org. I am Laura Carfing, breast cancer survivor and founder of survivingbreastcancer.org, a nonprofit organization providing community, education, and resources to empower those diagnosed with breast cancer and their caregivers from day one and beyond. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Breast Cancer Conversations. I am so excited today because we are speaking with Holly, who is going to be joining us on the podcast throughout the month of September. Her and I had an opportunity to speak and talk about how breast cancer has led us on some wild and crazy paths. We never thought sometimes that breast cancer could be this catalyst for us to take daring steps in our lives, take on crazy adventures and do things we never thought we could do before. I know being diagnosed with breast cancer, I used to get these um, like get well cards or feel better cards or encouragement cards sent to me. And you would see these, these happy sayings saying that, you know, we are braver than we think we are. We're stronger than we think we are. And it's true. I definitely believe that. And now that we have been diagnosed with breast cancer, I can say we are empowered to live our lives the fullest with making the most out of every single day and living an excuse-free life. So I am thrilled to have Holly on the show today because she is going to talk to us about this happiness, this joy, this level of positivity, and how breast cancer became a catalyst for her to live this amazing, beautiful life traveling the world. Welcome to the conversation. So I'm Holly Wintrip, and I just turned 50 this summer. Happy birthday. Yeah. Yes. And my goal was to um, hit 50 countries before I turned 50. Um, And the journey started literally when I was a kid and fell in love with traveling. And I traveled a lot through the United States, but then having a child in my 20s, and I was a teacher for a number of years, over 20 years, um, lastly ending up being a middle school world history and geography teacher. And um, grew up in Ohio, so I'm a huge Buckeye fan. My Saturdays are filled with Ohio State Buckeye games, and but moved to Florida in the 90s where I fell in love with the beach and concerts and hanging with my family and friends and teaching, and that was my life for um, the majority of my adulthood. And then what happened? I got breast cancer, and in the process of that, I was navigating my journey of being a caretaker for my parents who were also going through their cancer journeys. Oh, and my really? dad passed. Yes. So my dad passed away two months before I found my breast cancer. And then two months after that, my mom discovered her lung cancer. So it was this, you know, perfect storm of, of, of life hitting all at once and navigating that while working and being a mom and, Um, being in a new marriage, um, second marriage with my husband. And so, so here we are. And once I got finally through the journey um, and the medical stuff started to ease and I decided I needed to take a break from work for a year. And I finally said to my husband, we have a window of opportunity here. We can stay doing what we're doing. The kids have moved away. We're empty nesters. Um, why are we waiting? His parents are fine. My parents have passed. Let's go. Let's just, just do it. Um, and so we did, and we started the process of getting rid of our things and we just sold everything and went to, um, Europe last summer because my daughter lives in France with her husband and was having a baby. So we went to see the new baby. Yeah came back to the States to see family and friends and then decided we'd start our journey in Asia. And so how do you even go about doing this? Where do you begin? And what about healthcare? The way we do it is by booking flights to the cheapest place on the cheapest flight available and just kind of roll with it. Um, And the challenge of it is finding the medical care that I need along the way, because I still need scans. I still need checkups. And I have learned of another woman who's been on the road since 2014, and she's the one who gave me ideas of how to find medical care while abroad, 
which is what brought us to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, where we are now. So we came here in January um, for me to have medical care done and turned out that the medical center I chose is in the Blue Cross network. Didn't even realize it. Um, the medical care is significantly less expensive than what we were experiencing in the United States. Um, for example, I have to get a prolia shot for my osteoporosis, which was brought on by the medication and, and chemo and whatnot. In the United States, it's over $2,000. And here, it's $250. Wow. Yeah. So those are just that's just like one small example of this. And once we left Kuala Lumpur, we were making our way back over to Europe and had spent a month in Sri Lanka where I broke my ankle learning how to surf. And you have a good story for it, at least. <laughs> and that's another story. And had surgery in Colombo. And what, what the magic is in this whole, whole experience of the last five years is how each person's connectedness with myself or with other people has either helped others or it's helped me. So when I broke my ankle in Sri Lanka, I messaged my oncologist back home, whose wife is on the board of an orphanage in Sri Lanka and has a connection to a surgeon in Colombo. Wow. Who, this, this, this just keeps happening. The more we put ourselves, I put myself out in the world, these connections keep happening. So after surgery, we flew back to Kuala Lumpur and the borders closed in Sri Lanka and the borders closed in Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia. And, and here we are. And I'm yeah. sitting here after having just a, another ankle revision surgery a week ago, and I'm good to go. I'm done. Yeah. I told the doctor, this is my ninth surgery in five years. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But yes. I love your fearlessness of, you know, the taking that risk and that jump to mm -hmm. figure out not only your own like health insurance, but to pack up, leave, travel, experience new cultures, new healthcare systems. And yes. And to go surfing. I mean, I don't even know if I would have the guts to like put myself <laughs> out there, um, you know, fears of water, right. ocean. I mean, there's so many things that I can be, I can rattle off. And I agree. I love that you're just kind of putting yourself out there in the universe as well and just letting life co make connections and connecting the dots for you. I feel very similarly with the world of podcasting. I get to hear everyone's amazing stories. And then, you know, my head is constantly churning of, oh, I need to connect you with so-and-so. Or, yes. you know, there's this other woman too, who also used to live in Florida and now she's like in France too. And, you know, just, oh, I, I love that because it's yes. the richness and satisfaction mm -hmm. I think that we get in, in understanding life and, you know, the value that we can bring and share mm -hmm. and help other people. So that's, I love Absolutely. that. That's exactly what it's about. I love the story of how you get diagnosed with breast cancer and you literally never know where in the world it will take you, what path it will lead you on, the people and connections that you're going to make. If you were to ask me several years ago what I would be doing at the age of 38, it would not be hosting a podcast on breast cancer. I would have no idea that this is where the world was going to take me. And I am so excited for continuing this conversation with Holly over the month of September. We spoke um, for this recording for, I want to say an hour and a half, almost two hours. There's so much great content in her story. So tune in next week. We're going to take a deeper dive going back into her story and journey with breast cancer, how she found out about her diagnosis. And then in the third series and episode, we're going to talk about her experience with cold caps. But in the meantime, if you're interested in hearing more about Holly, you can check out her story on survivingbreastcancer.org forward slash survivor stories. I will also link to that in the show notes below. If you have a story that you would like to share with us on how being diagnosed with breast cancer led you to this wild and crazy world that you're living in right now, we would love to hear from you. Feel free to email me directly at laura at survivingbreastcancer.org and we'll connect. Thank you for tuning in and listening to our podcast. If you would like to find out more about our organization and upcoming events and ways to connect, you can find out more by visiting our website at survivingbreastcancer.org. I would like to acknowledge that all of the information on our podcast is from personal experiences and it is not a substitute for professional medical advice. You should always consult your medical care team. If you're looking for specific topics or would like to be a guest on our show, feel free to contact me directly at laura at survivingbreastcancer.org. And of course, we have a couple social media handles you can follow us at as well. 
for example, Surviving Breast Cancer Org, all one word, as well as our podcast specifically, Breast Cancer Conversations. Until next time, keep on thriving.